um, Mr. Osin Bajo, a senior member of, of the bar and a colleague, Your Excellency, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga, um, the former Prime Minister of Kenya. I would like to thank the uh, Leadership Forum Group for putting up this wonderful event. As I was coming up here, I realized that um, there's a reason as to why Nigeria is called the giant of Africa. You can throw a party. Uh, but let me say um, and seek the forbearance of the Vice President and the former Prime Minister, who are very strong Pan-Africanist, uh, because I'm going to quote Winston Churchill, a person I don't always like to quote. And I like to quote two things that he said uh, the first one was that democracy is the worst form of government except for all the others. Meaning that democracy is not perfect, but still it is the best form of government. The second thing that he said was that the best argument against democracy is a five-minute conversation with the average voter meaning that sometimes voters can get it wrong for a number of reasons. And I say this because I think today we are reflecting on democracy. And democracy, as we all know, is an experiment. It is not a destination. Democracy pivots on two basic tenets of liberalism. The first tenet is that of formal equality. Formal equality. The second tenet is that of abstract autonomy. Abstract autonomy. Formal equality refers to the relationship between one person and another and speaks to the inherent dignity in the human person. Abstract autonomy refers to the fact that we own ourselves, that no one owns us. We as human beings own ourselves. And this means that we have the sovereignty of personhood and the sovereignty of reason. It is because of these two tenets that democracy is not possible. But you realize that I talked about formal equality and abstract autonomy. I did not talk about substantive equality or, or substantive autonomy. This means that in the democratic, democratic experiment, we use formal equality and abstract autonomy as a springboard for democracy when we give them substance meaning that the institutions of government must empower people to have and to create substance in terms of equality and substance in terms of autonomy. And I say this because of a trend that we have seen in Africa and elsewhere in the world whereby those notions of, on which democracy pivots, equality and autonomy, have been subverted. And they have been subverted by populist authoritarians. And by populist authoritarians, I'm referring to individuals who manipulate and seize institutions and structures of democracy to subvert democracy. Meaning that they speak the language of democracy, they speak the language of liberalism, and they speak the language of the rule of law, but they don't mean it. They speak that language to seize power, to subvert 
the will of the people. And I think this is something that in Africa we have to think about very seriously. Because we in Kenya have just recently experienced what I've just described, where a political party and an individual who claimed to speak the language of democracy and the language of human rights and the language of a bottom-up philosophy was able to work in cahoots with domestic cartels, with international interests, and to use technology to subvert the will of the people. As you all know, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga, who is your guest today, competed in those elections. And I don't think it would be fair for us to sweep what happened under the carpet. So permit me two more minutes to just describe something to you. So we went to elections in Kenya after a long campaign period. Uh, we have in Kenya an organization called the um, IEBC, the Electoral Commission, the Independent Elections and Boundaries Commission, which is, um, whose purpose is to conduct elections in Kenya. Uh, that body was supposed to be independent, but several things happened. The members of that, com that commission working in cahoots with the interests I just described, were able to subvert the election of August the 9th, 2022. I want to say that Mr. Odinga and others in the Azimio party were willing to concede the election if the election was free and fair. But what is your obligation as a citizen of Africa if you know that an election has been stolen? What is your obligation to the people of that country, to Africa, and to the notion of democracy? Luckily for us, a couple of weeks ago, a whistleblower from the IEBC, the electoral body, came forward and provided authentic statistics about the outcome of that election. I don't know whether you know this, but Mr. Odinga won that election by over 2.5 million votes. Currently, we are asking Kenyans to think about what they should do about that. Because if nothing is done, if we cannot stop electoral theft, then there will be no reason for you to go out and cast your ballot in the next election. And democracy will die in darkness in that particular case. I just want to say several things here. Number one, uh, that Africans must think carefully about the use of technology in conducting elections. Because we've seen in Kenya how technology could be manipulated to subvert the will of the people. The second thing I would like to say is that Africans must be very careful about the interference of their election and their electoral processes by foreign powers. I know that Mr. Odinga is going to talk about generally about elections in transition and their effect on the economy. But I thought it would be a disservice to Africa's giant if I did not ring this bell to you, because you are very soon going to go to an election, and you'll have to think about how free and fair that election is going to be in view of Kenya's experience. So I'd like to say thank you very much. I'd like to thank everyone. And uh, I would like to wish all of us a wonderful conference. Thank you so much.